on the midterm. It will not say prove indirectly. We're going to have to read it on Monday, and you're going to have to read it and say, oh, I need to do this indirectly. What up here signals I have to do this indirectly? James, go. Prove something's not happening. So once I see I have to prove something's not happening, I say to myself, ding, 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 this is going to be an indirect proof. All right, so let's review the steps of an indirect proof. Okay, you can put your givens in there first, that's fine. But if you put your givens in first, anybody know what I need second? What did we call that and where do I find it? It's called my assumption. Where do I find it? Or where do I obtain an assumption? What am I going to assume here? What do I assume? Opposite of what? Be careful. Prove statement. Not the opposite of your given. I'm going to assume the opposite of my proof statement is true. So I'm going to assume that MR and NQ bisect each other. Use it as a given. Use it as a given now. Before we move on, what is your goal right now? Contradict a one of the givens. Well, there's only one given up there we have to contradict. So somehow you need to tell me why MN is equal to QR. Why MN is equal to QR. All right, let's do this. Anything you want to add to get there? 26, what do we want to add in here? Okay, these two angles are congruent, that they are. So angle MPN congruent to angle QPR. Vertical angles are congruent. Nice job. Okay, need a little more here because remember, you're trying to prove MN is equal to QR. How else are we going to get there? Five? Not here. Okay. How about we go with 26 again? Because you know that they do what to each other? Bisect each other, yep. So I'm going to go MP congruent to PR. And I'm going to go NP congruent to PQ. Definition of a bisector, yep. All right, what do we know about the two triangles now? They're congruent, so tell me in the correct order they're congruent. So triangle MPN is congruent to, if I go MPN, looks like I got to go RPQ. Guys, got a method for me? Side, angle, side. And by proving the triangles congruent, what did that tell me now? Which two sides are congruent that I needed? MNN. QR by CPCTC. And hold on, though. We were, to we were given that they weren't. So what's that say about my, my assumption? My assumption is these can't happen at the same time. So my assumption must have been False, right? My assumption should have been false, which means the opposite, MR and NQ do not bisect each other. Uh, 
Anybody remember the reason? Ella? Assumption led to contradiction, and you guys are going to tell me in parentheses what lines your contradiction is on. Assumption led to a contradiction. Bless you. And what lines are my contradiction in? Looks like lines one and six for me. Contradiction. I don't care which one comes first and which one comes second. Remember, that one doesn't, all right? Your given, though, has to come before your contradiction, though. Anybody else? Indirect proof? Again, last, last time I say it, I will not, if it is on the midterm, if it is on the midterm, strong chance it is, okay? Strong chance of one of the proofs. One, two, three of them, strong chance one of those three is going to be an indirect one. I am not going to say do it indirectly. You guys are going to have to notice by the proof statement that you have to do it indirectly. Joanna, you're up. Let's roll. Okay, how about we just how about we just fill in that table we used to put up here? Does that sound good? Everyone remember that table where it said concurrent line, point of concurrency, inside outside theorem. Yep, good idea. Good idea. I don't think that table's anywhere in there, so you may have to take notes. If you want a unit, it's unit five we did it in. And again, this table's not set up anywhere specifically. So we'll start, we'll start with concurrent lines. Okay, anybody want to start with lines in a triangle that are concurrent? There's four sets of lines that are concurrent. Anybody know? Remember the type of lines? All th three lines in a triangle that meet at the same point. There's th four types. Medians do, yes, medians. And if you want to get me to get ask away at the end, okay, so the next question could be what's a median again, but I want to make sure we fill in this entire. All right, medians are, what else? Anybody remember medians? Altitudes are, yep. Medians, altitudes, two more types that are concurrent. Perpendicular bisectors are. And there's one more type that are all concurrent in a triangle. Angle bisectors. Nice job, everybody. While I'm on these four, can you construct these four? If I give you a triangle, can you construct those four? There are practice problems in your packet on unit, at the end of unit five. All right. All right, next, next column is, what's the point of concurrency called for those four? So point of concurrency. Okay, here we go. Where all three medians intersect? Centroid. Altitudes? Orthocenter. Anybody remember perpendicular bisectors? Circumcenter. And how about the angle bisectors? In center.
do you know how to construct those? Do you know how to find those points using your compass? All right, I'm just going over different things you could see. All right, different things you could see. All right, next little game we'll play. Inside, outside, on the, on the triangle. So we'll call this one location. Maybe. Location. Medians, centroid. Think about it. Can any median be outside a triangle? No. So where's the centroid always going to be located? Inside the triangle. Yep. All right. Now we have to get a little crazy. Ortho center. If it's a right triangle, it's on it, right? If it's a right triangle, it's on it. Specifically where on it? Two legs meet. Where the two legs meet. Okay, what other type of triangles could I have? Because we're not done here. What if it's not a right triangle? What if it's acute? Anybody remember where the ortho center was located in an acute triangle? Inside. Inside. It's killing me. Anybody, and where is it located outside? Acute is inside. Obtuse is outside. Yep. Perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular bisectors. Could be outside, inside, or on. Okay? Could be either one. Could be any of the three where the circumcenter is. And then in center. Think about it. That's the per angle bisectors. Where do all the angle bisectors always in a triangle? In always inside. So the end center has always got to be inside. And finally, theorem. What should I know about it? Theorem. Here we go. What should you know about the centroid? What was the special theorem about the centroid? Breaks the median up in a ratio of two to one. So divides median into a ratio of two to one. So the part from the vertex to the centroid, vertex to the centroid is double the length of the other side. Ortho center, there is nothing you have to remember about the ortho center other than it's formed by the altitude, the altitudes. Right. Uh, circumcenter, what, so, what was so special about the circumcenter? Anybody remember? Equidistant from the vertices. Yep, equidistant from the vertices. That's your typical problem. I have a slide over here. I have a merry-go-round over here, and I have a jungle gym over here. Where can I put a water fountain that's equidistant? I'm putting it wherever the circumcenter is. Okay. And then in center, that's equidistant from the. Anybody remember that? Equidistant from the sides of the triangle, yes. There it is. Good question, Joanna. Very good question, because I know there's some questions on there regarding this stuff. Can you construct these four? Can you construct these four? 
All right. I'm not going to tell him any constructions on there, but don't be surprised if I ask for a median. Don't be surprised if I ask for the ortho center. All right. And again, if you keep going in unit five, I believe at the end of unit five, starting on page, there it is, page 56, we give you a triangle, do a perpendicular bisector. If you did all three, where would they meet? Okay, so starting on page 56, good practice. Let's keep rolling. We go right up to the bell every day. We go right up to the bell. Anything else we want to cover? Specific topics or specific questions we want to go over? Those are two excellent questions, ladies, right there with the indirect proof and the uh, points of concurrency. Very good questions. Yes? How many times do I have to go over that? I'm not going to review a construction in class. Look at the video. Like what? Um, like the, uh, I forget exactly what it was, but there's something like that. Because all of them are covered on the videos. Right. Or if you want to come to a review session, I will certainly sit down with you and review. The only reason I don't do a construction in class is because they take about 10 to 12 minutes and then a fourth of the class is already gone. Okay. Other questions? Nothing here? Yes, go ahead, James. What do you got for me? Page, which page are you on there, Stud? 37. 37. I'll do as much as, as much as I can of it. This one right here? Yeah. Prove it's isosceles? Okay. Page 37 of your review packet. Proving this triangle is isosceles. Got it. Oh, okay, maybe you want to get out of that. Okay, back up. Okay, here we go. Okay, here you go. Prove it's isosceles. So the givens are in there, three congruent to four. Uh, this goes out to everybody. What makes a triangle isosceles? Two congruent. Angles or two congruent sides. Okay, let's go the angles here. If I know three and four are congruent, this also kind of goes back. Actually, I won't say people haven't taken it yet. What do you know about angles one and three? Supplementary. So angle one and angle three are supplementary. And same thing with angle two and four. Everyone agree? Two and four are supplementary. Anybody know why they're supplementary? This is going back to unit two now. Linear pairs are supplementary. If the angles are supplementary, so are the, if these two angles are supplementary, so are its supplements. So I can say now in step three, angle one congruent to angle two, supplements, of congruent angles are congruent. The requirement, before you tell me, use this theorem, take a look. Before you use this theorem, you got to tell me what angles are supplementary. That's the requirement before you use this theorem right here. All right, now that one and two are congruent, what do I know about triangle ABC? It's isosceles. I don't need to say anything about the sides, but you can if you want. And why is it isosceles? What did I just prove? Two congruent angles in a triangle. Imply isosceles triangle. Yep. All right. Okay, you got to come back with some questions here. All right, come back with some questions. I'll be here today, all the rest of the week until three, and then the special review sessions. <coughs>